series coming to an end, what has working on Warehouse 13 meant to you, one, as an actor, and two, as a person? Um, uh, as an actor, it's interesting because I think that one has so deeply affected the other. Um, you know, I, uh, it, 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 when you watch Pete, um, I think you get a, a pretty good sense of who I am. Um, uh, I, in my earlier incarnations, <laughs> have been a bit of a kind of drifting, lost soul, and, and, uh, and, I, and I, I think that, that uh, you know, the fact that I kind of was a journeyman in my acting, I, I've done 10 pilots, I've been on five network shows, I've done 50 guest spots, and never was able to find something that was my own. And um, so being cast as the, you know, the, the lead on the show, uh, on a television show, and that people would trust me with that um, is a huge uh, compliment and uh, great responsibility. And, and it was very humbling to realize that, that, uh, that people were able to get give that responsibility to me and they trusted me with that. I think that that's helped me to have more confidence and just be a, a more well-rounded guy. Yeah. And, and uh, help me to be a better dad and, uh, and a better actor. Yeah. So. From the beginning of the, the series to now, have you enjoyed the journey Pete's taken on the show? Yeah. I mean, Pete for me is the is the dream character. I get to be everything that a man would ever want. A man and a kid. I get to have everything that a kid would want to have, and I get to have everything that a man would want to have. I get to be, you know, brave and loyal and uh, heroic, and I get to be strong, and at the same time I get to be silly and, and juvenile and Ridiculous, and you know, you know, I think so lucky as an actor to be able to play all those things to have that many facets. Because you know, normally, you know, you're either on a procedural and you're saying, "All right, tag him and bag him," and you know, take him off the glasses. And, you know, or you're, you know, the monkey juggling the balls and being funny. And the fact that I, that on this show we got to. Do high comedy, and in the next moment, you know, the audience is crying. You go from laughing to crying in the same scene, and uh, it's it's miraculous and, and I'm lucky, and uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's a testament to who Jack Kenny is. You know? Speaking of comedy, um, your 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 comedic timing is spot on on the show. Oh, thanks. How much of that is ad lib or improv? Because there's some things you do that I'm like, he has to just have improv that. I mean, I think, you know, comedic timing is like, um, like I, I play the drums, I'm not a great drummer, but I think it's like playing the drums, you know, knowing when to hit the crash cymbal and knowing when to do a roll or whatever. Um, uh, there's, there's stuff that's improv, but you know, uh, very seldom will I necessarily just make stuff up in the middle of the scene because Jack would, would kill me. Um, so I always ask most of the time, I'll be like, Jack, you know, what if I do this? And he'll go, I like that. Or he'll go, yeah, what about? A lot of times he'll go, okay, let, we'll build on an idea and that will be created in that, in that moment, you know, not necessarily in the script. And, you know, I think those are some of the funniest parts of the show. Like, mm -hmm. One that sticks out um, from season one where they, the people had on black, uh, it was the uh, record player artifact, and, and uh, Micah says to Pete out in this alley, she goes, one of them was female, and Pete says, well, how did you know? And, and Micah goes, I felt her. And, and then, and then I, I go, you mean her boobies? <laughs> and that, Stay, and uh, like when Artie said, I made cookies in the pilot. Um, 
there was no written reaction, Pete's reaction to the cookies. It was just my impulse to go, ooh! And that just became like um, the tag for the first season's, uh, you know, advertisements. You know, that was kind of the, the hook that, that helped us. Um, I'm not like trying to take credit or whatever, but it's just those were some of the things that, that um, were improv. I mean, if, if, if it's incredibly silly and it stays in the show, it, it was probably for me. If it's funny and, and uh, cerebral, then it was probably Jack. Right. Uh, so I'm, I take responsibility for all the uber goofy stuff. Yeah, my, my sense of humor tends to be a little, little base. So. <laughs> Looking back, over the, jokes. <laughs> looking back over the show, is there an episode or a moment where you look and you go, that is what Warehouse 13 is all about? Uh, yeah, um, we did, uh, there was a uh, the pilot episode from last season. It was just, you know, so much fun and funny and, you know, like, and there's a scene where Pete and Micah are carrying this big box together and then Micah hears something and she lets go and Pete, you know, falls over with the box and, you know, you're laughing and then Pete walks up and has the conversation and then Micah walks away and Pete goes over and he's like, what's going on? And she ends up telling him that she has cancer and then all of a sudden you went from doing this box gag to now the audience is in tears because Joanne is so good at being able to, to play that and those are the moments. Hi. Look, it's the moss. I have to pee. Oh, <laughs> should I go through? Sorry. <laughs> as long as you don't have to poop. <laughs> Did you get I got that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so the, that, that, that's like a moment to me that says Warehouse 13. I mean, when we did this telenovela, I'm serious, I think it's going to be the fan favorite episode because it's so funny and, uh, and so fucking broad, so broad, you know, it's so incredibly broad and funny. And, I mean, you know, I play this character, Armando, but I'm speaking in, you know, fluent Spanish. And, uh, Everybody's eyebrows are arched. Saul plays uh, Colonel Rafael Obregón, and he's just brilliant. You know, I mean, it reminds me of like Treasure of Sierra Madre. We don't need no speaking bad. Um, just uh, really fun. What would you like to say to the fans of Ben with the guy? Well, you guys since episode one, because <sighs> they are diehard fans. I understand. I've seen the tattoos. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, guys, um, I'm sorry that we have to go. Um, but uh, you've given me so much. Um, I, I love meeting you all when I go to conventions, and, and I hope that that continues. Um, you've made it possible for me to care for my children and my family and uh, you've helped me to you know have confidence in myself and what I am and who I am and what I do um, I can't tell you how valuable it is to um, realize that uh, people have invested themselves in, in my success and seeing me succeed. And I'm so grateful for that. And uh, I hope that I keep on keeping on and hopefully I'll see you on my next thing. And finally, last thing, what can we look forward to in the final season of the show that you can talk about? <clears throat> it's, it's hard. It's all such a blur. It's why, it's why it's such a it's like a difficult question. Um, the telenovela episode is going to be fantastic. Um, you know, uh, we've been taking tap dance lessons, so there'll be some of that in there. Some 42nd Street dancing girls, top hats perhaps. Um, we've got 
got some uh, some great guest stars. Come on, man. Don't you don't you know who I think I am? <laughs> uh, you've got Saul Rubinek in a tutu, which I'm not, not supposed to talk about. But can't help it. And, uh, everything that you've come to expect from Warehouse 13 is packed into six, six episodes. Yes. Cool. So, and